don't you click that remote. Don't go away. Don't stand up. Don't go get yourself a cup of coffee because if you do, you're going to miss a really, really, really good show. You're going to find out the essence of what the dispute is about in the state of Illinois. Are we in a financial crisis? Could it be fixed really easily? What, how do you reconcile people like Ralph Martiri on the left that say, oh, we've got this terrible thing and we've got you know, structural deficits and you've got John Tillman and the Illinois Policy Institute says, easy, I can solve this right away. Professor Dye, our expert here from the Institute of Government and Public Affairs at the University of Illinois, he's going to clarify everything, okay? So don't you click that remote because if you do, you're going to miss a really, 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 really good show. Watching Public Affairs, Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game and we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening. Well, more public policy because we have as our guest Professor Richard Dye. He, look, he's been teaching economics for like three decades. He's now at the Institute of Government and Public Affairs at the University of Illinois Chicago. He knows the essence of economics. He knows public policy. He knows the nitty gritty of state spending. As I said, you know, so I just ask you, people say the University of, they say the state of Illinois is in a financial crisis. It's easy, right? And what would be the easy solution if you wanted to tell people what to do? I know you don't usually do that. What would be the easy solution? Uh, the easy solution would be to do away with the democratic process because anybody can solve the problem. I can really? solve the problem. Even really? you can solve the problem. Uh, it, but the problem is getting some sort of a consensus and working through the political process. The state has a big gap between spending and what's coming in in revenues. And the arithmetic of solving it is easy, but the politics is not. The arithmetic is easy, but the politics is not. And what is the arithmetic? The arithmetic is we have a deficit. It, when you look at a broad-based budget, not just the general funds, which can be manipulated by moving things in and out. Uh, when you look at a broad basis, the state has a deficit on the order of four, uh, of four billion dollars, which is which is growing about uh, a half a billion each year. Uh, is going to grow to about fourteen by by say twenty twenty five. Stop you. You start out by saying the state has a deficit of four billion dollars. Yeah. No. What do you mean? Because kids might. I, they don't. But if they did learn in their civics classes that the Illinois Constitution says that you must have a balanced budget, and you know that, right? I know that. So then we must have a balanced budget because they wouldn't break the law, would they? The kids know a lot of jokes. <laughs> uh, the, that's a joke. You're that's saying? a joke. The the, the, constant, the balanced budget requirement of the Constitution uh, in Illinois is one of the most lenient of all the fifty states. What it says is, the state shall not spend more than funds estimated to be available. The governor can't propose that. The legislature can't pass Estimated that. to be available. Uh, funds okay. estimated to be available. But funds estimated to be available can, and this is something you can spend, mean previously accumulated funds that are built up in accounts. Reserves. Reserves. Oh, okay. And it can also mean borrowing. Borrowing. So if you can borrow, you can have a deficit if you reasonably can expect that you can borrow, which most most uh, entities can, most individuals can, and most states can. States have a much better uh, opportunity to borrow because they can give the lenders first claim against tax revenues, so, whereas they right. might cut you off if you ran a deficit year after year after year in your family budget. You, you might not be able to but the they, they're but the sort state of, of They have a can. priority. It's like being in bank bankruptcy when you have multiple creditors. They're, they are, are preferred. They're preferred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and estimated to be available be before the budget. With the borrowers from the state oh, the of Illinois. Okay, the borrowers. The, 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 borrowing. the creditors, the lenders to the state of Illinois, the people who lend money to the state of Illinois are preferred creditors relative to, when you say me, as somebody who might 
think I could receive money, say I was on welfare, I was on Medicaid, say I was uh, an educational school district, whatever. Get in line behind the bondholders. Bondholders supremo, okay, yeah. preferred. Yeah. Okay, so we clarify okay. that. Okay, okay. So they can borrow, so so in a sense, okay, they, so, but you're saying if you take away borrowing, if you take away moving funds around from reserves and so forth, are you saying in the last fiscal year, or the current fiscal year, we're taping the show on March 31, March 31, 2014, a day that will live on in infamy, I could say, because we're taping the last show. I could say this, the last show to come out of the Comcast Skokie studio. Don't want to interrupt now, we'll come back to that. But as of March 31, 2014, does, is the state of Illinois running a deficit? Uh, on a broad, it, the way I like to do it, which I think is reasonable, but not, uh, is, is more, is tighter than what the Constitution allows, is to not count the pre-existing fund balances and to not count borrowing. And if you do that, we're in pretty good shape right now, a deficit of only about a billion dollars. Only about a billion, but did we, did we borrow in this, which fiscal year are we in, the 2014? 14. That ends on June 30, 2014. Correct. Right? So if you look forward for the next three months and you look, at the, look backward for the fiscal 2014, the last 12 mm -hmm. months, by the time we get to June 30 and we look back, well, how much will we have borrowed to make things work for the last year, approximately? Uh, Ballpark. I mean, the, the, during that year to make the things balance. Well, we're still borrowing from the pensions. I mean, that, that's the big, that's the big okay. source of... I mean, we're uh, not making payments on the we're pensions not, still. We're not making sufficient payments to stay current. Uh, how much are we short that... Uh, how much are we well, obligated, I, as you would say, how much does it appear we're obligated to put into the pension funds, state employee in other words, and we as a state are not doing that? I, mean, I don't have those year. numbers in front Ballpark, of me, but, 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 but uh, uh, there's a couple of billion dollars difference. Two but, billion, but, okay. But so there's that. And then what else? And are we borrowing just in the market? You know, selling. It's not. You know, it's, it's 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 squeezing the balances in the pre-existing funds. There is some borrowing, but the small amounts. It's not it's, like it's yeah. not like the ten billion dollar plan of Rod Blagojevich of twelve years ago, or ten no, years ago, or something. Hardly. So maybe we're borrowing over the course of the year. I don't know, five hundred thousand, half a million. No, that would be right. Five hundred million, half a billion, or something. If yeah, if you. Okay. If, and the other, the other thing okay. about the good back to the balanced budget requirement, it's at the beginning of the year before the budget that you have it has, it has to, to look be it has right. to look balanced. So you're There's saying no backward so look. it really isn't as of looking at in, to, in 2014, looking forward, the deficit. If you didn't look at pension issues, would be roughly about a would you say half a billion? No, I said about a billion, billion. For, the, for for 2014. And then if you throw in the pension stuff, then it would be maybe more like three billion. Is that right? Uh, I mean, is that where, because you started this discussion by saying we got a $4 billion deficit this a year. A year from now. I'm, not, I'm well, looking at 16. Looking but, going but, forward. But, 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 so the pension thing gets a little worse even though we've had pension reform, or what yeah, gets worse? Yeah, even though, even though yeah. we've had pension reform. And the so, be, so last year was about $3 billion. Next year it will be about $4 billion. And your recent study, because you're the co-director of what? The, inst uh, the Fiscal Futures Project. So you're the co-director. Who's your other co-director? David Merriman. Okay. And David Merriman was on Chicago Tonight recently, right? Yeah. Talking about this. You're talking about the same thing here. We're competitors. Didn't really believe it. Chicago Tonight and Public Affairs. So who is that woman that was there? What was her name? You remember her name? Uh, who was talking to David Merriman? I don't know who talked to Carol David. Carol Merriman, maybe? Okay. Yeah. I forget who interviewed him. I'm, I'm just kidding, I'm, Carol. Everybody's heard of Carol. Nobody's okay. heard of Jeff Burke. Was just kidding. Okay. Anyway, so he was there saying probably something quite similar, which is the state from your study that you've looked at is in terrible shape because even with pension reform, even if the tax increase stays in effect, you know folks, the governor said four years ago when he raised your taxes and the legislature did from 3% to 5%, he said this is just temporary. The bulk of it, or at least a large chunk of it, would go away in four years. He said that, right? He said that and? And he, and he said so it would go back from 5% to 3.75%. And then recently, when he gave his state of the budget address, the state yeah, of the, the, the state of the what the budget the state uh, of the economy, budget state of the, state, the budget so address yeah budget address. the annual budget address he said no no I was just kidding I was just kidding Pat Quinn said I'm not really going to lower your taxes because it turns out we need it isn't that what he said it's effectively yeah all right so he said it won't go back to 3.75 it'll stay at five and what 
And I, did Mr. Merriam sort of give the impression when he was on with Carol Marine that, that was probably the right decision? Because I think he was on right after that speech. Do you see how you're, you, I just want you to see, do you understand how your organization is used? You may not like it, but it's used. Uh, I don't, uh, I, I don't, of course anybody who makes any public statement can be used. Uh, we estimate that the state has a deficit, looking a year out or so, of about the magnitude that would be eliminated if the tax increase were made permanent. Or, a, or over the next year, over the next say year. 20, say 26. So you're saying when you say $4 billion cooking ahead, that's assuming the tax, the tax increase goes away, goes that's back correct. down. That's correct. And if it doesn't go away. It'd be, it'd speaking, be roughly balanced it'd in be that first year. It'd be roughly balanced in that first year. And that's what your report said. That's, that's what we said. That's what, you, that's what David Merriam, right, told? That's correct. Carol Merriam. And so Carol and all of the people at TTW, they all believe this. They do. They all believe this. I know I'm a community, I'm a, on the community advisory board at TTW. They all believe that, uh, that the state must raise taxes because if it doesn't, according to you, we'll have a deficit and we shouldn't have a deficit. There's two ways to eliminate a deficit. You can either raise taxes or you can cut spending. One of those on the order of magnitude of four or five billion dollars was necessary uh, for, this, for the state. Okay, you could cut spending, but that sounds cruel and heartless, and the people who are on Medicaid, will, they won't get medical care, the kids who are getting educated won't learn how to read. Isn't that how it's represented? And uh, is all that true? Uh, I, I, you just made the case then for a, a tax increase? Is no, this what is what Pat Quinn would say, this is what Carol Marine would say, this is what Eddie Aruza would say, these are the people who are all moderators on Chicago Tonight. This is what Phil Ponce would say, look, to work at TTW you have to be left of center. Um, and all the people left of center believe what I've just said. Now, it's the, I'm not saying they're bad or wrong, but is there another point of view? Of course there's another point of view. And what's the other point of view? The other point of view is that we have a spending problem in the state and we're spending too much. And well, what is that? Give me that best light you can do on that because you know this stuff. I'm not saying you necessarily agree with one side or the other. What's the best spin you could put on that argument? Uh, the, I mean, Go ahead and tell us where would we have to cut spending and how would we do it if you, if you were king, you could no, no, see, I don't, I don't do the if I were king because I can arithmetically balance the budget. I would cut all your programs and which leave programs? all mine. No, but which ones would we say? It, your but which, I don't, I see. No, but for public policy, let's be serious. You were an economist, right? Right. Now, I understand from this guy, Milton Friedman, there's something called positive economics and normative economics, right? Correct. And in positive economics, we just say what is. That is, if the man goes up and supply stays the same, we could predict that in a free market based on positive economics, the price will increase, right? Correct. Now, we can't tell people we should allow the price to increase. That would be a normative statement, right? Right. Now, but we could say, I think, if we really pushed it a little bit beyond Milton Friedman, sometimes we do that, folks. If I said to you, what's the big ticket item in the state budget? What's the driver? You know, what is it? Is it prisons? Probably not. No. What, 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 what's the big driver? Uh, the big drivers are pensions. Pensions, okay. Uh, medic, I always have to hesitate. Let's see, we care about old people. We aid per, poor people. Medicaid. Medicaid. <laughs> Medicaid. Okay. Uh, and uh, public education. Those are the big, the big ticket items. And so if you want to make a dent, if you want to say try to reduce spending next year by $4 billion, which is what would be necessary in your view to keep a balanced budget, right? Yeah. You have to probably cut Medicaid substantially, spending on education substantially, and pensions payments for somewhere among those three. It doesn't yeah, have to and be then there's social service spending, which is sort of what's going to get cut if we don't plan on cutting right. the big unpopular ones. And you've studied this more than I have. What could we do about Medicaid? Because a lot of people say. What? They say there's fraud? Do you think there's fraud in Medicaid? Sure. And wh what kinds of fraud? Can you tell people? Uh, there, there's, uh, there's providers uh, getting access to, uh, to names and numbers and billing for things that don't exist. They're, they're, over, they're over providing. Uh, 
I, they're probably individuals billing Medicaid, you know, how to, how to monetize that unless it's, unless it's drugs you can turn around and sell. But there's lots of things that, but that's, that's well, federal. That's, but, see, no, that's no, federal. Isn't there like income eligible? Didn't we expand in Illinois the number of people on Medicaid by reducing or making it easier in terms of income or asset eligibility to qualify for Medicaid? Rod Bogoyevich was pushing for that for a long time. Pat yeah. Quinn was pushing and succeeded. Some have said it's now become more of a middle class program. It was initially a low income program. I don't know, is it something like a third of the people in Illinois are now receiving some form of Medicaid? I yeah, think no, I, so. I just don't have Ballpark. that on top of my head, but, but yeah. But yeah. So we could, and some, Steve Rausenberg, you remember that name? Sure. He's formerly a senator, oh, a yeah. state senator, or thought to be a budget guru. We're taping this on March 31st. Folks, just yesterday, Steve was here sitting in your chair. He said there's massive fraud there especially in the form of income el eligibility, asset eligibility. He thought we could probably save a billion, a billion and a half without hurting, I'm paraphrasing, without hurting low-income people at all. Just other people who are getting Medicaid now would have to get it in the private sector, their health care. Assuming that, so that's one possibility, right? You okay. would grant that's a possibility. Sure, sure. It's Can't a possibility, it. but I also think that somebody who talks only about waste, fraud, and abuse is trying to divert your attention Not from only. the, no, no, the that realities. Was, that, that's one area. Okay. And then on education, Steve's a big believer in school vouchers, school choice, charter schools, competition. Now you're a big believer, I would imagine, in competition. You went to the University of Michigan, got a PhD there, right? Yep. I don't know whether it'd be as free market as this place, University of Chicago was when Milton Friedman was there, because he wrote, you know, free to choose with Rose Friedman. It gives you or some tip off where his views were. Um, but I think the University of Michigan, when you were there, had people who believed in the free market, right? Uh, any economist who doesn't understand how the market works is not an economist. Okay. And you understand how they, you're an well, economist, right. so you understand. Yeah. Do you believe in the free market? E economists have two insights, markets work and markets fail. Friedmanites have one insight, markets work. Okay. No, that's not true. Maybe we can get that graphic up, as we have that. I was saying you're playing into it a little bit, but that's good. Yeah. As we had this show where we looked at, a few weeks ago, the myths of the mainstream media, and there are 10. Yeah. One of them is, I don't know, Terry, it might be like two or three. Market failure is rampant, okay? That's the myth, the mainstream media. And then the truth is, it's not rampant, and often of governments fail. So what you want to ask, not is there market failure, but in the area we're talking about, is the government likely to fail more than the free sure, market? Sure, sure, sure. Right? Yeah. Because you admit there is a government failure. No, right? I, absolutely. Would the public schools in the city of Chicago, could they be viewed as a government failure? Because they are government managed, but they are publicly financed, right? Sure. Is that a government yeah. failure? Yeah. Is that government, like, they're government managed? Yeah, right. It's a, part. Yeah. Failure, it, right? It, it's a, it, it's a lot, yeah, it is a failure. No. One out of every five black kids in the fourth grade, in fourth grade in Chicago public schools reads at grade level, indisputable. Four out of five don't. Now, as an economist, what would you say, as an economist, what did you learn, what did you study in economics that might be a remedy for that failure of government? Uh, market-based solutions. I understand. Which you're, you're, also, you're also you're feeding me words here, but, well, but no, I'm uh, trying to I'm trying to draw you out because some people have been critical and said I talk too much. I should feature my guest. So after doing 810 shows, and now that they're closing the Comcast Skokie studio, it could be the last picture show. Remember that Civil Shepherd? Wow, I should be so lucky. Okay. Uh, so now that it's my last show and I'm getting down to my last 10 minutes, I thought I should try to do it right. Feature you. You tell me and you tell, more importantly, our viewers, how does competition work and how could it work to fix the Chicago public schools? Uh, competition works <coughs> when you are dealing with a product that is called a private good, which means the benefits are enjoyed by the individual and the costs are borne, uh, of producing it are borne by the seller. So markets work very, very well uh, in privatizing decision-making where the, the costs are private. Uh, we, we don't have these problems. Where there are no external there, costs There are no external costs or benefits. And there are no external benefits. So, so we don't have Isn't that in large part true in education? Because you can make an argument that education is a public good, but in large part, if you teach a kid how to read, he'll go out or she'll go out and they'll have a better job and they'll earn more money and those benefits are private. The costs, um, the costs are being financed by the government but 
If you did it right, we would say, if, like Milton Friedman recommended, take the 15000 which is what we spend per kid per year in CPS, give it to the parents. If they want to stay in the public school, no change. If they want to go to the private school, well, then they do. That's competition. That gives the public schools an incentive to get better. Some would say that's what happens when you have charter schools, not just the kids have a better choice, but also the public schools get better. Some dispute that. But isn't that competition? Isn't that just pure economics? It's not, it's not pure economics because this is not a pure good. You can't, you can't, uh, I happen to agree with you that the public benefits or the public good benefits of public education are way overstated. Uh, can't run. Public education is largely a good that produces benefits enjoyed by the individual in their future right. earnings and their family. Uh, right, so it's, it's not clear, and I don't, I don't want to revolutionize, so it's not even clear why we have it publicly financed, because if it's largely private, you can have almost the optimal number without having the government involved. But that's, that's yeah, I don't have time for that, because we only got about we'll 10 do minutes do merit left. goods in your next last But so you're show. agreeing that it's largely a private thing, you believe in competition, that would seem to propel you to say you've got a problem in CPS, why not have more charter schools, why not have more school vouchers, why not have competition? So, so these kids who are can have a terrible life because they're not learning how to read can have a chance to do what Rahm Emanuel does. He sends his three kids to the lab school at the University of Chicago. Do what Barack Obama does. He sent his kids to the lab school at the University of Chicago, and in D.C. he sends them to some school, Sid, Sidwell School, that costs thirty thousand. Almost every Democratic politician does this who says vouchers are terrible. Not to be political, they almost all send their kids somewhere other than the public school. So why not give these black kids who are low income, and some are and many are Hispanic too, they do a little better. Why not give the minority kids in CPS, black and Hispanic, mainly what they are, it's not their color, they're parent, kids of low income parents, 30,000 maybe their parents, give them a chance to do what the president did, what Ram does, exit the failing school and go to a school where they'll learn how to read. Uh, you stated your conclusion, it came out of your mouth. Would you agree with that though? Uh, no. Why? <laughs> I, I mean, I, You're an economist. Be, be, I just stated pure economics. This is just pure baby. This is economics from the uh, University of Chicago. We're talking about not an ounce we're, of originality. We're, we're, we're talking about said. redistribution here. We're talking about spending other people's money. No, no, no. no, no we're, 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 yes, you are. Me. You are. We're already spending fifteen thousand. I'm just giving it to the parents and say, you go and choose between the private and public school. I'm not redistributing. It's already coming. Any, I'm not, so, I'm not spending more or less. You started with a redistribute. Well, no, whatever we're doing, the main thing is I'm giving people choice. Why would you be opposed to choice? Uh, I'm, I'm not opposed. I'm not, I, you know, this is not something I, uh, I think about or deal with. I mean, I, I know that's okay. a great, it's a okay. great debate at the okay. core of economics. Well, let's, but, we got but, but, so, I, mean, I do state budget stuff, and you've got your But I'm just saying, you see, but they're using schools. WTTW and the liberals and Pat Quinn, they're using your stuff. Jim Edgar, Kirk Dillard, even Republicans, they're saying, look, we can't do this. We can't get by. We've got to raise taxes. They're using your stuff, and you know that. You're not doing it. I'm not blaming you. I'm not putting right. you up on the cross, so to speak, okay? But they're using it, and I think you should say, you know, there is another way. I mean, you said this here on this show. You didn't say it at TTW because they didn't ask you the question. That's well, the when point. I was on this, the same show, they asked me, but go ahead. Oh, they did say, they did say, is there another way? Can you have school vouchers? Can you have well, schools? Not school? They didn't make the jump from state budgets okay. to school. Well, education, you better do something. You said it's either pensions, education, or Medicaid. We talked about Medicaid. We talked about education. Let's talk about pensions. But, what do you do differently on pensions? Because we only got six see, minutes left. And, I, you know, it doesn't matter what I do to cut spending. It matters what the politician who's running against Quinn or somebody else says they will do with spending. And if they say what we're going to cut is waste, fraud, and mismanagement, they are inviting no, you to not notice the problem. Away. I didn't do what waste. are they we going did to little, cut? We did a little bit of fraud on Medicaid. What are they we didn't cut? do any fraud in education. Well, the, you know, the main drivers on the pension costs, if you wanted to reduce to cut spending on pensions, cost of living adjustment, the COLA is the sure. main driver. Because you know, the state of Illinois said for a long time, until recently, no matter what your cost of living is in reality, no matter what the consumer price index, you know about yeah. that, inflation, you're getting 3% a year. We'll just call it a cost of living adjustment. If, you're, if the inflation level was a half a percent, you're still getting 3%, okay? If it was 5%, but that main, and, and it was compounded. So that was the main thing. 
that okay. cost of living adjustment that made the, those adjust, and most of the private sector switched over to defined contributions into your plan, sure, sure. not state stayed with defined benefits. So one, you'd have to adjust the COLA dramatically, you know. You'd have to increase the employee contribution. You'd have to reduce the retirement age. And the people at the Illinois Policy Institute say, if you want a long-run solution, better go to defined contributions. And that current pension reform didn't do, did virtually nothing about going toward defined contributions, right? Right. So you could say all of those things. You could say that. I didn't say fraud. I never heard, you never heard fraud come out of my mouth once, right? Uh, so what do you say about the things? Well, I, I mean, the, your turn. I mean, the, what makes the pension, pensions difficult is that the state was able to do something that a private business can't, can't do, and that they were able to allow this unfunded situation to build up. So right now, here we are in a right. big mess. They would have gone to jail if they were. Here a we are in a company. big, big mess, and in and if you were a public employee, you would say with some justification, it ain't fair. I paid in, no, and they and that's the, but, not but, quite the, true. but that's the state not, the state it, didn't the state didn't pay in. No, and, but and, even, and the people say even if you put in money, just the rate at which these things were going up, this crazy cost of living adjustment, the salary structure relative to the private sector. No, no, no. These were generous pensions to begin with. They became more generous in their adjustments, and you as an economist could say Alicia that. Alicia Manel has looked at pension systems across the nation, and she does not think that Illinois has a particularly gen uh, generous public, uh, public pension benefit. Why do they benefit? want to find benefits so much? Why are the unions so adamant? Because if it's simply the amount and putting it in, well, then you could say, give us a defined contribution, then you're obligated to put it in, and, and a deal is a deal. Why don't the unions say that? Uh, the, because they don't, do they? They say, and it is distracting from where we are, but they, they say that it isn't fair to have these rules and the state not to have met its obligation for the last, right, for the okay. last 20 years. And then to take it out of the people, uh, you know, that's where the money is, we're all, we're all adjusting. Life is difficult. You know, sure, people, sure, go, sure. people work uh, for companies that go through bankruptcy. Somebody's wheelchair has to be pushed off so the So why does the state right. have to be different? If the private entities have to adjust, if 85% of those have to go to defined contributions, why shouldn't the state employees? Uh, that's, a, you know, that's a perfectly plausible solution. Okay. Uh, is to go. So you would agree. But going, you but would see, agree. going forward, okay. Okay. Go, going forward with defined contribution, doesn't doesn't save the fact that uh, until several months ago, and the courts are still out on this, we had a hundred million dollars of unfunded benefits, benefits that were promised by contract that weren't that weren't right. put aside. Unsustainable. We were on on because you know what, nobody's going to want to raise taxes as much because they're going to have to keep doing this. It's a Ponzi scheme, right? It's a Ponzi scheme. And you, the only way to do it is to, is to slap, because as you said, even if you keep your institute said in the paper that you've written with Mr. Yeah. Professor Merriam, even if you don't let taxes go down from 5 to 3 percent, you're saying you're still going to run a problem in 10 years, if not sooner, oh, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. You've got to keep raising taxes. Folks, go out there. You've got to work for the state employees. You've got to work for the teachers. If your median income is like 40,000, 40, if you're not in the, in the government sector, you got to support people where the median income, like at CPS, the median income at Chicago Public School teacher, seventy thousand dollars. So we got to tax the people who are earning forty thousand to finance the pension for the people who's, who are working seventy thousand. Does that sound fair for redistribution? Because I know e economics is supposed to be value free, but it seems unfair to say to a low income taxpayer, you're going to have to pay for this higher income person who happens to work for the state of Illinois for pension. Does that seem fair? Uh, it, it, it doesn't add up. See, I'm not holding brief for public employees. Uh, I mean, I, I just... But when you go but, on Chicago Tonight and they use your studies that way, it sounds like you are because the, the, choice, the choice is you either adjust on pensions or you don't. And if you give the impression it's not a pension problem, but we're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, Professor Doug. It's gone all too short. Okay. I hope you'll come back. We'll finish this Good. discussion. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, what, what my study said.